In the last couple of videos, we've been learning how to do local RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. And we've seen how to do vector search using Quadrant and then full text search using DuckDB. And in the comments on the last video, someone asked, why would you do full text search over RAG? So in this video, I wanna try and answer that question while showing how to do both techniques in DuckDB. So we're gonna launch IPython, and then we're gonna load a file that I've got on my machine, which is the transcript of an episode of the This Day in AI podcast, which we've been using for the last few videos. And then we'll have a look at it with help from the Rich console. And you can see this is the transcript. We've seen this a couple of times already. You can see they start off talking about Claude Sonnet, they then compare it to GPT-4, and there's 60 minutes worth of transcript for us to play with. We're now gonna use from the Langchain text splitters, the recursive character text splitter to break that up uh, into chunks of 300 characters when we'll do a little bit of an overlap of 100 characters. And then we're gonna call the create documents function on our text. And then we'll have a look how many documents we, we've got. So you can see it comes back. We've got 308 documents, and then we can have a look at just one of them. And we've kind of seen this a few times, but you can see, so Chris, last week, of course, the big news was Claude Sonnet. So now we're gonna create some embeddings. So we're gonna use Llama CPP and the, one of the mixed bread embedding algorithms. So we're gonna call the create embedding function, and then we're gonna pull out the page content for each of our documents, and we'll also time how long that's gonna take. We'll speed this up a little bit, and you can see it eventually finishes. It takes just under 27 seconds for our 300 or so documents. So about 0.1 seconds each. Now we're gonna create a document embedding variable that combines the document with the embeddings that we pull out from that embeddings variable. Next, we're gonna put that data into DuckDB. So let's import DuckDB. We're gonna create a connection to uh, just a local file. We're gonna store this in podcast.duckdb. Then we're gonna create ourselves a table. We'll call it podcast transcript. We'll have an ID, an episode, a paragraph text. And then the extra thing from the last video is embeddings. And we need to say how big are the embeddings. So they are at 1,024 numbers. So a float 1,024. We'll then iterate over the documents embeddings variable. We're going to insert into podcast transcripts. There's going to be five values. The first one will be a UID. Then we're going to give it an episode ID. So that'll be 68. The index, i.e. the paragraph number or the chunk number. Then we're going to get the page content. And then we're going to get the embeddings that we just created. Give that a couple of seconds and it's now ingested. I'm going to also put a full text search index onto this. So we'll install and then load the package. And then we're going to create the full text uh, search index, telling it the table, the ID column, and then which fields we want to index. And we'll run that, and that's now done. Now we're going to create ourselves a function called FTS, so full text search. It's going to take in a query and a limit. We'll select the text and the paragraph. We'll then use this macro that gets created when you create the full text search index. We'll tell it we're going to be getting the ID, and then we'll pass in our search term and get the score. We'll then say we don't want any results that don't have a, a score and we'll order by the score descending and then do the limit and then pass in our parameters. So that's the full text search side of things. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the vector search. So we'll create our function. We need to do one extra bit of work, which is to create an embedding for the search term. We'll then call our query. So we're gonna get back the text, the paragraph. We'll call use the array cosine similarity function, calling that against every embeddings column for our search vector and then we'll return the highest similarity scores and again we'll pass in the parameters. Okay so now let's try a query. So what are Apple doing around AI? So they talked about this and then we'll do that for full text search and we'll do it for vector search. And you can see that both of them have done well here. So they've both come back with the section where they were talking about Apple devices. Let's now compare the approaches in a bit more detail. So we're gonna get some help here. So we're gonna use the rich library again. We're gonna create ourselves a format results function that's just gonna allow us to see each thing side by side more easily. I'll put the code in the description for everything that we do here. So we're gonna start with full text search. Now the benefit of full text search is that if there are, if we know there are specific keywords or phrases or exact details that we wanna find, it's gonna be really good for doing this. So let's try a query that's kind of in that sort of mold. So which AI model did they refer to as having a death blow impact? So that was a phrase that they used. We'll use our format results function. We'll pass in the query, and then the results of calling full text search and the results of calling vector search. And you can see it comes back. So full text has done better as expected. So it's pulled the chunks with that phrase. The other chunks on either side are not really, are not really relevant. Now vector search on the other hand is quite good at when there's context or themes or semantic meaning of the queries, but the exact term is not in the text. We could try a query like, what can AI models be used for? I'm not sure whether they talked about this exactly, but let's see what it comes up with. So you can see the full text search responses are not really that relevant. 
Vector search mentions use cases, but the context is kind of cut off. So maybe the chunking went a bit wrong there. But if we scroll down, it does say kind of jokingly, uh, maybe we can use it out to figure out the type of a plant. And, and you've seen lots of examples of people doing that. Let's try one more. So during this episode, they spend a bunch of time criticizing Google for making it really hard uh, to use their stuff. So let's ask it which company is making their AI inaccessible. And so you can see that for vector search, it comes up in first. And that was like, cool, because I didn't actually mention uh, Google in particular. Interestingly, though, full text search has also picked it up in third. So you can kind of see that even though it seems like vector search should be better for something, full text search could also find it as well. And one thing we kind of noticed throughout is that a lot of the what was coming back was maybe not pulling in the full context that we needed to allow an LLM to answer the question. So if you want to see a technique for solving that, have a look at this video up here about Langchain's parent-child retriever.